Hi and welcome to another video from the Brewing HQ. Today I'm going to make a partial extract brew of a milk stout. Um, what's a partial extract brew? That's where I use a majority of dry malt extract with some steeping grains. Now I'm going to make a small batch. Um, this is only 10 litre batch. Um, so it uses a hell of a lot less ingredients than you would normally use. And I like small batches because it allows me to kind of experiment a bit. So, What's my grain bill for today? I'm using 1.2 kilograms of dry malt extract. Again, this is a partial brew, so it's mostly dry malt extract with some steeping grains. I have 140 grams of crystal malt I'm going to add, 140 grams of chocolate malt, 140 grams of roasted barley. 120 grams of lactose. Now lactose will add sweetness, um, but the yeast can't uh, can't break this down. I'm going to add 30 grams of Fuggles pellets, hot pellets, and I'm using Nottingham Ale yeast because it's a great yeast. I'm not sure why. Uh, in terms of equipment, you can maybe see behind me here. I have 9.8 liters of water here that I'm going to heat up. On this side, obviously, I have my fermenter here, um, a glass carboy with some sanitizer in it. I also have the scales because all my ingredients here I have to measure out. A digital thermometer, just because I prefer digital. I have a refractometer for uh, a gravity reading before fermentation. Got a muslin bag. Um, behind the camera, there, I also have a sieve and an airlock um, and they're sitting in some sanitized water and um, so let's get started so step one I have to separate out all my ingredients um, into the right amounts so I have my digital, my digital uh, scales here I need 140 grams of roasted barley. And pour that out. It's 88. And there we are. Oh, that's one. Well, that's just here we are, 140 grams of roasted barley. Now I'll do that for the same for all the other ingredients. So, as you can see, I've separated everything into the amounts that I'll be using. So that's 120 grams of lactose. It's 1.2 kilograms of DME uh, split into two uh, 600 gram batches. I have 140 grams of chocolate malt, 140 grams of crystal malt, 140 grams of roasted barley, and 30 grams of fuggled hops. The next step is to add my three specialty malts to the muslin bag. So again, that's 140 grams of chocolate malt, 140 grams of roasted barley, Oops. And 140 grams of crystal malt. Oops. So that's my steeping brains. I'm just going to tie this off. Now, on to the next step. So I have 9.8 litres of water in this pot, and the next step is to heat it up until 70 degrees Celsius. I 
my trusty digital thermometer here. Um, once that reaches 70 degrees, we will move on to the next step. So my water is heating away. It's currently at 50.8. And uh, while it's heating up, I'm just going to show you what's going on over here. I have my sanitizer bucket, which is sanitizing pretty much anything that will touch the the beer. And um, I have my refractor meter ready for a post fermentation gravity reading. Um, it's also really interesting to note the amount of leftover um, uh, materials I have. So that's a good amount of DME and a good amount of grain, and particularly the lactose. So hopefully I'll get another brew out of that. So I'm not sure if you can see there, but we've hit 69.6, 69.7, 69.8 at 70. At 70 there. I'll turn off the gas. 70 there. I'm going to put in the steeped grains. Make sure they soak all the way down there. And I'm going to put the lid on. Start my timer here for 15 minutes. And leave them sitting for 15 minutes. I'll come back periodically and check the temperature. Keep it around 60, 67. So there's 13 seconds left in my timer. Um, Temperature is sitting nicely at 67 degrees, and as you can see there, it's a nice dark brown color. So, the timer is going to go off. Here we are. And at this point, take that away. I'm going to lift out the, the grains. It's been my safe here. I'm draining them off as much as possible. Now I'm going to drain as much as possible as I can here. And once this has finished draining, I'm going to increase the temperature up to high again and get this up to a rolling boil. So, my work is starting to boil. At this point I'm going to add 600 grams of dry malt extract and my only hop addition which is 30 grams of fuggles. Um, so the first thing I do before I add my dry malt extract, dry malt extract is I turn off the, the gas because I don't want this to scorch and burn at the bottom of the pot. So I'm just going to turn this off. I'm going to slowly add this in. Over. Almost out of oil over there. Very slowly add this in. Pour some water on the bottom, so it's going to keep, make sure you stir it.
kind of flat at it, and I'm going to increase the temperature again. And add my 30 grams of hops. Oh, and start my timer for 60 minutes. And off we go. Now I'll keep an eye on this consistently throughout the boil to make sure it doesn't boil over. And our next addition is more dry malt extract with 15 minutes to go. So, while that's boiling away there, I'll just make sure the temperature isn't too high in there. I do not want it to boil over, just a nice rolling boil. I have my next addition set up. So that's another 600 grams of DME, dry malt extract, at 15 minutes. Got 120 grams of lactose, 15 minutes, and I have a, a Whirlflock tablet, or a piece of one anyway, um, for five minutes. So, while that's boiling away, I need to sanitize and get ready for the fermenter. So here's my fermenter. Um, it's got some sanitizing liquid in it. I've also got a, a bucket made up of some sanitizer here. Uh, Starasan, again, which is a no rinse sanitizer. And I have stuff like my airlock in it. Um, I have a funnel. This is, this is to take a sample from my refractor meter. Um, I can sit in there maybe um, when I'm and I put stuff in, in the uh, fermenter. I have a whisk, obviously, because I want to get a good amount of oxygen in the wort. And the, and the bung. So that's what I have in there. So um, if I can put this down here. Get my fermenter. Just give it a good, give it a good shake. Again, that's a no rinse sanitizer, which means that I just have to empty this out and I don't have to I don't have to rinse it. So I'll make sure everything's sanitized while the boil is on and I'll see you for the next step. Just a quick update on the boil. I have 29 minutes left on the boil, so we're about halfway through. Um, a lovely smell in the kitchen at the moment it's kind of chocolatey chocolatey malty it's lovely um, my next additions will be in about 15 minutes so um, I haven't lost a huge amount of evaporation um, and this time I have a little squeeze bottle of uh, star sand just in case I, I get a bit of a boil over like what happened when I added the first um, sugar addition see you soon So, there's 15 minutes left on the boil, so it's time for some more additions. Um, another 600 grams of uh, dried malt extract. So for this, I'm gonna turn off the heat because I don't want it to scorch on the bottom. Um, I have some star sand spray, just in case it starts to boil over again. So, here we are, I'm gonna add this. Okay, luckily it's not boiling over this time. I also have 128 grams of lactose tat. In it goes. And at this point, I start the boil again. And my 
final addition is a world flick tablet. Five minutes left. I start my timer again. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's five minutes left on the timer. So it's time to add the work fork. In it goes. And see you in five minutes. So let me just turn off the extraction fan there. And um, if you look at our timer. There are some 50 seconds left, so our boil is just about finished. At this point, I'm setting up my sink here because before I put it in the fermenter there, I need to cool it down as much as possible. So it's critically important that anything that touches the, the wort at this stage is sanitized because um, an unsanitized utensil or stirring tool um, can add some uh, unwanted germs to the the uh, fermenter. So the goal in the next step is going to be to cool it down as much as possible get some, and get some oxygen in there. So that's five, four, three, two, one. Boom. So there we are, 60 minutes. So you're going to turn off the heat. Let me just put this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Transfer my wart to here. This thermometer, just to make sure it's sanitized in advance. Stick it in here. Switch it on would be a good idea. I'm going to fill up the sink with cold water. Now, the goal is to get to about 20, between 20 and 25 degrees before I move it into the, the uh, fermenter. I also have a sanitized whisk, so I'm going to take this time to give the, the wort a good vigorous stir of water manner. This is going to take some time now. Again, the goal is to get as much oxygen in there as possible because the yeast will really like oxygen um, so that it can it can multiply at the first stage of fermentation. So again, give it a good vigorous stir while keeping the water on. That's how right down to 88. So I'll come back to you when we're closer to the temperature. So, the wort is just under 25 degrees, so I'm going to transfer it into the fermenter now. So, I'm going to take it out. Remove that from there. Bring the fermenter in here. My sanitizer spray, the spray. I have a, a kind of a sieve in there just to catch the heavy stuff. So now I'm just going to pour this in and hopefully it won't go everywhere. My wife might hold it for me there. Thank you.
the spoon. And you get the idea, but we'll start the video again once we're done. So at this point, all the wort has been transferred to the fermenter, and I just need to add the yeast. So, there we go. In it goes. This is my airlock. Let me just put this down here. Put this in. I'm gonna give that just a bit of a shake to get the get the yeast going. Um, I'm gonna fill my airlock. We can see this with some some sanitized liquid. That's probably enough. And I'm gonna move my fermenter in here, which is my utility room. Say hello Daisy. Hello. Unfortunately my wife has the dryer switch on, but I have a heating pad set up that I'm going to put the fermenter on now. So there's the fermenter in its home. Some various store-bought beers around now. Um, I'm going to leave it there for about two weeks. I expect that to start bubbling Probably pretty fast. Um, I'm hoping to get about between 15 and 20 bottles from that. But the final thing to do is a refractor meter reading. So here's my refractor meter, and I took a sample of my wort. So I'm just going to take a quick refractor meter reading to. Uh, to see what gravity I got. So I'm just going to squirt a bit on there. Nice and dark, as you'd expect from a stout. Close it up and have a look through. And it says my final reading is about 1.073. 1.073. Let me just double check that. 1.073. So, just make sure you take a note of that in your brew journal. 1.073. So that's it. Brew day done. Um, as far as brew days go, it went pretty well. No major uh, mistakes or errors. Um, What's left to do now is just a massive clean up. Um, there's crap everywhere. Um, so, right. Here's a quick update on my milk stove fermentation. Um, as you can see, the yeast is going to overdrive as normal. This is about 12 hours uh, since the wort went into the fermenter. Uh, it's bubbling away there nicely. Um, it's always interesting when you look closely at the fermentation to see actually how active it is. Let's see if I can get a bit closer to this. Um, maybe you might get to see here, but 
it tends to be swirling around in there. Um, and I didn't realize until I had a glass carboy. You can't probably see that very well. I didn't realize until I had a glass of carboy how active the fermentation actually is. But this is all good. There's a close up of the, the beer now, and you can see how active it is actually inside. It's all swirling and. You can see the yeast actually uh, floating inside.